Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, um, my name is Dr. R. Ranga Prasad, and I'm the business development head at Packaging 360. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this webinar on advances in package testing for e-commerce and logistic business. Uh, we will just wait for a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, as uh, we have uh, participants still joining us. So we'll wait for two or three minutes as people are still signing in, and then we will get started with the session. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding. So I see people are still joining in maybe just another minute or so and then we'll get started. Okay, so good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of Packaging 360 team, uh, welcome to the uh, webinar on advances in package testing for e-commerce and logistics business. Uh, as you're aware, uh, the, in the context of the current challenging situation, uh, which has emanated over the last eight to 10 months, uh, we've all been un under different stages of lockdown. But uh, and even during these challenging times, uh, we've had our regular quota of uh, packaged foods, our uh, essentials, medicines, and other uh, industrial activity going on despite the pandemic. Uh, logistics and e-commerce have come to play an important part in the last eight to 10 months. And they have ensured that life still goes on in spite of all the challenges. Well, in this context, we decided that uh, we will uh, do this webinar, but more on the technical front and acquaint ourselves with what are the recent advances in package testing uh, methodologies and the various standards and regulations. And uh, so for this webinar, we have uh, delighted to have two speakers. Mr. Car it gives me great pleasure to welcome Mr. Carlos Mora. He's a sales manager at Safe Loading, uh, Safe Load Testing Technologies from Spain. He comes from Valencia, a lot of experience and represents his company on various uh, uh, regulatory and uh, uh, bodies like ISTA and uh, other, other IAPRI. Uh, Mr. Carlos Mora will essentially discuss the uh, advances made in instrumentation, the, uh, the testing methodologies and some case studies to back up his uh, presentation and uh, also gives me great pleasure to welcome Mr. Ram Ratan, who is the CEO of Sure Group. Uh, he has a lot of experience. He's a very passionate about new technologies for e-commerce and logistics business. And he will share some of his insights and actual uh, 
uh, hands-on experience as well as some interesting case studies related to the logistics scenario in India and what are the challenges faced by the logistics and e-commerce businesses in India and the way to overcome those uh, challenges. So before Mora, uh, Mr. Mora presents his, uh, uh, um, his talk, just a little background. We all learned in packaging schools about the various tests that are need to, perf to be performed for a package to make it transport worthy. And these are what are called transport worthiness tests. Uh, we are familiar with uh, the drop impact test, the inclined impact test, the vibration test, the rolling test, so on and so forth. That there are national and international standards which are easy to execute. But logistics and e-commerce businesses have matured much more due to the advances in uh, testing methodologies, instrumentation, and also the various uh, standards and regulations which govern the e-commerce and logistics business. So uh, taking this discussion forward, uh, I invite Mr. Carlos Mora to make his presentation and share his insights on the advances in package testing for e-commerce and logistics business. Over to you, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, to be here watching this webinar. And let me share with you the my presentation. Just let me know if you can see it. Yes, it's visible. OK, perfect. So thank you, everyone, for watching this video, this webinar. Thank you, Rangar Prasad and all the team in Packaging 360 that we are happy to, to work with. And as a, Ranga Prasad said, my name is Carlos Mora. I'm the sales manager of Safe Load Testing Technologies. We are a company that designed and manufactured the testing equipment for Pakachi. We are a specialist in transport simulation, and that is what we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about what is this of transport simulation, what are the trends, what are the goals that the people is uh, pursuing with this, this kind of technologies. And then we will finish with a small business case. And then I think Ram Rotan will be much more in, in deep in specific cases and so on. So first of all, the index we are going to follow as I advance, we are going to see and make a short introduction about what are the hazards, what are the forces that our packets uh, or our loads are at the end or pro our products are suffering how to use the transport simulation as a tool, and then finish with the, how to simulate the different forces and what are the advantages we can get. So starting with the hazard um, and forces, here we have some numbers. You already know that there are billions, billions of euros or dollars or whatever you want to call it, loss uh, because in, in product damages during transportation. So there is something that the companies must be aware of and, and need to think about. Also, there are different studies that indicate that 25% of the truck accidents are due to an unsecure uh, load. It means that the company can lo lose not only money and image because of the product damage, but also can cause an accident and can cause uh, many many things that we don't like to to mention but can cost lives even so it's a it's something that we need to to point out here let me play some videos about what what are the different situations or products can can have okay so and at the end when we are talking about transportation when we are talking about Packaging to protect the product or packaging needs to be aware uh, about all these forces, all these possibilities on the on the way. Now, when we go in deep with the different forces, the different stresses that your, your package are suffering during transportation, we can start with the uh, static. The static forces in this case when you start to stack different boxes the box on the very bottom is suffering the force due to the the other boxes so it means the box needs to to resist this force and needs to resist the force for a while i mean for 
for time and time. It is called the creep, and there's the creep resistance of the package. Entering in the dynamic forces, we can start with the impacts. We all know the, what is an impact, what is a hit, but that can modify, can uh, how to say, can collapse even the box, as you can see in the in this picture. Another dynamic stress that Frank Apasat mentioned in the in his introduction is the vibrations. We can even feel the vibrations when we are in a in a truck or when we are in, in our own car. We are driving and we are feeling this kind of random vibrations constantly during the, the whole trip. So our cars are nicely equipped with the the, the soft way to, to pass all these vibrations, but you can imagine in the in the truck the, the movement and the vibration are much, much heavier that we are that we are suffering. So we need to, to be aware of that. What well, is of our, our product resisting the this vibration, this movement? So it's something that we need to to know. And also another force, uh, dynamic force that we are suffering and we can even feel too is the acceleration when we are in a track and we accelerate the, the track or the car is the same. You can feel an acceleration in your even in your body or when the track or the car breaks, you can also feel that, that acceleration. This acceleration has the capability to deform your load. So we need to know that when we pack something, it's going to move a little bit. So we need to, to know what is this elasticity that our product and our package uh, can have. Here are a short, uh, short video of what is the, the, the effect of the acceleration in a, in this case, in a palletized, palletized load. So let's start with the more in deep with the transport simulation. Let's start thinking or mention what are the, the scenarios we can have or we usually have. When we pack something, we can be underpacking or we can be overpacking. You can see in the, I think the, the image is quite, uh, is, can explain it much, much better. But if we are in the underpack, we can understand that we are going to have more and more problems during transportation. We are going to suffer more and more damages in our product. It means an economic cost. But not only that, it only means uh, damage in the brand, in the brand image. Uh, internet is full of pictures, photos, videos of people complaining about uh, how the package arrived to their home completely smashed and the product is not uh, safe enough. So it at the end means that other possible buyers or other possible customers look at that photos and say, okay, I don't want to buy it because I don't want to, to receive something that is completely broken. I want to receive something in one piece. On the other hand, the way to solve that is, okay, let's pack um, more and more and more the product. Let's protect it with more things, whatever. We put all the things we can put in, inside the box. And then we are in the other part, but we are overpacking. Well, overpacking uh, means there will be uh, an efficiency in the logistics. It will be an environmental impact. We are using more materials. Uh, doesn't matter which kind, plastic, or carton or whatever, we are using more and more, what makes no sense, and we are wasting a lot of material. And also the, the brand image is a match because also on the internet you can check uh, many, many posts, many, many image or videos where people uh, order, I don't know, a, a, a pen or something like that, and the pen arrives in a, in a really big box. So at the end, it's also a, a really poor brand image it gives the, the customer the idea that your company is not, how to say, worried about the environment. So you, if we translate it into, the, into something more, let's say, technical, probably, when we have a, a supply chain, we, we know or we can measure what is the distribution environment severity level. That is the, the, the dot lines you can see there. We have our product. Then we need to, to pack the product and then 
we can be in the two scenarios I mentioned before. We can be underpacking. I mean, we cannot, we, we don't reach the severity level, or we can overpass the severity level with the two problems that I already mentioned. So the idea is to find this optimal packaging. And in some cases, what is even better is to improve the product. So with less packaging, I can reach the severity level. It is done right now in, in many different products like e-readers or something like that. But they are the product is is robust itself, so they just need to cover it with a cartoon or paper packaging. So at the end, when we are designing a packaging, we need to, to, to think not only in the packaging, but in the, the combination of product and packaging. Sometimes it's cheaper or it's much better to improve a little bit the product and reducing the packaging material. So everything I explained is, is summarized in this graph. You can see you are in the overpacking part. What we are having is a lot of waste in material, a lot of money spent in material. But if you start to reduce the material, less and less and less and less material, what is happening is that we are losing more and more and more during transportation. So there is a cross in, in between, and it's something that we can use the transport simulation for. Maybe our, our idea of as a transport packaging designer is to to see what is this cross line obviously the transport simulation is not something that we as safe load uh, created or only talk about there are different stakeholders different associations different uh, organizations that are involved in, in all this field we all know ISO or ASTM that they create norms to test everything and they also have committees dedicated to packaging. In Europe we also have UMOS that is an European association for transportation and logistics and there are others like TAPI or FEFCO that we are known about cardboard boxes and so on. But when we talk about the, the transport simulation the most well known is ISTA, ISTA or ISTA. You can say both both ways. The ISTA or ISTA is a, the International Safety Transit Association and it's an international association based in the in the States. And they have been developing different methods for many years now. And they are applied in this method are applied in all the countries more all around the world, and there are many labs also all around the world. So it's the most important part. They develop the, the procedures, what they call the procedure. A procedure basically is a, is a procedure in test methods. It means I have a, a box and then I need to, first of all, I need to drop it eight times, seven times, whatever in that case. Then I need to vibrate it for a while. Then I need to impact with an inclined impact tester. So it gives you all the steps you need to follow. So here we have the different series they mentioned, depending on, on what are the, the main purpose of each series. And I wanted to point in this field, the, in this webinar, the, the series number six. Okay, because in the number six, the series are developed together between ISTA and one customer. In this case, I wanted to mention Amazon. Ron Rattan is going to also to mention it with, uh, later. But basically, what Amazon did is to, to join ISTA, to work with ISTA in order to create a procedure. So if you want to sell through Amazon, you need your package, your product, your product and package needs to perform different tests. Okay, that's the, the, one of the big points. Then one of the question is how to choose the different between the different test procedures. So here we have a table to be something easy to, to choose. For instance, imagine you have a box of 20 kilograms and you want to parcel delivery. Then 
you can see in the in the table and you can see that your your test or the test method do you need to follow the procedure you need to follow is the ISTA 3A. Okay, so that's the, the way to operate the ISTA, ISTA different different procedures. So now jumping into the into the simulation of for, of forces, I want to show you some of the forces I mentioned before, how it affects to the package, how it affects to our loads, and how we can simulate them. The thing to simulate, the point to simulate is to have something that you can repeat over and over again. I mean, if I want to to design, I want to create a new box to transport whatever, to transport a pen, then we can design, but at the end we can have the chance to select one of the of the different alternatives I I I have. And then I could do one thing. I can I could transport both of them in a track and let's see what happens. But that's something that is not repeatable. So it means that maybe for this trip, specifically with this track, the option A was better than option B. But it doesn't mean that the for the rest of the trip is going to be that way. So the idea is to simulate, to recreate this kind of trips, something more standardized, something not so specific. And then with all the data collected, we can simulate all this data. Okay, so the first point obviously is to record all this data. There are many data recorders uh, with different brands. Obviously, we have our own. And with this kind of data recorder, you can record all the vibration, all the impacts, all the accelerations that your track or your load are suffering. That way, after that, you can replicate. What kind, what kind of forces you can replicate? For instance, the kind of impacts that you can have. Imagine when you transport, in this case, a forklift lift with your boxes, you hit the, a wall or you hit here the equipment. So you have this hit between the, the boxes. Okay, you need to be sure that your product is resisting that, that impact. Here we can simulate. Let me uh, pass the video a little bit. So at the end, the idea is to put the load here, okay, in this carriage. And then you select the speed you need to to impact from the the speed is what you record or is what is indicated in the in the different procedures like ISTA or STM they have what is the speed you need to reach okay, this kind of of impact simulation another question is as i mentioned before the creep or the static force when you are stacking different products and let me show you that not not with a box but with a Tower of, of humans. This is the here in Spain, that's in Barcelona. The, they are called the, the Castellers. And it's a traditional, really traditional here in this area. And as you can imagine, as you put more and more people on the top, the people who is in the in the bottom part is suffering more and more pressure and they can collapse. Only with one that collapse or the entire tower tower can, can collapse. Okay, so you can see in your right side the people is starting to to move too much and the tower can collapse. And it's the same that is happening with your packaging. You have one area that is not uh, strong enough, it can collapse, it can collapse your product, it can destroy your product. Okay, let me show you the video. Okay, and, and it collapse collapse for the weakness weakness point. 
obviously we can simulate that we don't need to to stack all the boxes we can simulate with one simple compression tester it's not something really amazing to see it's quite a slow when it apply a force and keep it for a while or it applies a really heavy force so you can see the behavior of your of your box or even the palletized load here we can see a, a box and at the end we can get the graph that show us what is the resistance of the of the box and what is the the time our box is going to resist that 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 force or that pressure As mentioned before, we also have the vibrations. So we can feel this vibration in our, in our car and it's not quite heavy for us. So we think it's not important, but let me show you this video of what are suffering the, the load due to the vibrations inside the track. The track is moving much more than we are doing in, with, our, with our car or motorbike. The track has worse uh, device, uh, equipment to to absorb this vibration so the the results are this kind of of movements inside the track and we are not seeing that because the, the track usually is completely completely closed and we cannot see what is happening inside but if we can put a camera as we did in this video we can see what is the the really movement the loads are, are suffering and obviously we can can simulate with a vibration table Let me pass the video, it's a little bit long. Let me sort it. Here we have the vertical vibrations. It means all the vertical vibrations that you can have in a, in a road or in a train or in a ship, you can simulate them. Please note that the, the vibrations we are suffering when a track, in a track on train or ship is a random vibration. It means that is not always the same vibration and that's all. It means we are now with this frequency and then we are with more frequency, less frequency, all together, everything combined. So our table can be must be able to do the same. So here we can see an example, vertical vibration. For the, further than that, we can go and simulate also the other vibrations that we suffer, that they are the pitch and the roll movement. When we break, there is a pitch movement. When we take a turn, we have also a roll movement. So we can also see, add to this vertical vibration, we can add the pitch and the roll movements with this module, in this case. And for pitch and roll, we can again simulate roll, we can simulate ship, we can simulate train, we can simulate whatever we recorded in the past or any standard we can we want to use. Let me put you an example. That is a a train you can see. And now let's see the the ship. As you can see the ship is a, a movement. It's completely the opposite. It's softer but it's more extreme in pitch and the roll but the, the frequency is, is quite low. Okay, so it doesn't mean it doesn't matter the, the mean of transportation you are using, you can you can always simulate what is happening in the real life. You can always simulate what your loads or your products are suffering, so you can be aware before uh, launching the product, you can be aware of uh, what are the forces you, you need to to be aware of, and you can optimize your packaging. Other point that I already mentioned is the accelerations. Imagine you are your load are inside this track, and this track must stop to make a, an emergency break. So you can imagine all the forces that are inside the track. To simulate to simulate that, we have two options. We can simulate with a long machine. And where you can simulate 
different acceleration curves. We can simulate going forwards and backwards. We can simulate any kind of horizontal acceleration we want. And we also have this version that is a, that is a shortest one. It's a really compact machine doing also acceleration profiles according to the different international norms. And obviously, we will see that we also need to, to measure with, the, in this case, with the camera, what is the deformation I'm having depending on the different accelerations. So I can compare different products. We can compare different solutions uh, in terms of primary packaging, secondary packaging, tertiary packaging, whatever. We can, we can test everything and we can check. So if we can see that the, the drug, the load is resisting the, the, the accelerations in the drug, then we can focus on optimizing this, this load. We will see later in the in the business case. There are one one important point when talking about boxes. Okay, to design a box, okay, we can put the cardboard box or something like that, and it's not going to, to be a problem. But we need to know that our, our product are suffering different impacts, but also are suffering different drops. You can see in the in this video that's UPS or DHL, something like that. Any logistic company sometimes the people working there are doing this kind of stuff. But I mean, it's not the logistic uh, company's only problem. It can affect anyone in, in your warehouse or what, whatever. When you are handling a, a, a product or a box, usually they don't have, take really care of where they are managing. Okay. In fact, we did some studies doing the the same the same route with a package, uh, the same route with a, another package, exactly the same as the first one, but putting the fragile uh, stick on it, and at the end the results were were exactly the same. The people don't really care if you put fragile or you don't. So we need to to be sure that your product is going to to resist all the impacts or the drops that can be happening in the in the handling in this case. So, and now that it's more and more common to make more and more steps in, in, during the su supply chain, we, are, we need to think that we, our product is going to stop in warehouse A, then pass to logistics center B, then go to another warehouse point C, and all of them could, be, could happen this kind of, of stuff. So what we can do is to, to simulate the drops in a lab environment, your of shipment. And here we can see that we only need to, to select what is the, the height we want to reach, and then we just let it go. Okay, we can make drops in flat way, edge, edge way, or corner in order to check or study the behavior of, of our package in all the different positions. There are another forces, one of these is the clamp, that is not really uh, well known. It's something quite new that the people in this field discover is the, the clamp forces, because as in this case, we can have a robot that is taking the, the boxes, not from the bottom, but from the side. So the, the robot itself is pressing, is compressing the, the box in the horizontal way. So we need to be sure that your product, your box is resisting the, this compression and it's also resisting. Uh, then we rise the product, the product is not going to fall down on the bottom part. Okay, so we need to, to simulate and we can simulate with a, with a clamp tested. Here again, it's a little bit slow. So it applies to the package, takes the package, and raise the package and repeat this operation as many times as we want, usually between five or 10. And then we can be sure that a product is, is able to resist these kind of robot uh, forces. So let's pass to the, to the business case. I don't want to enter in really deep what are the what is the solution? 
how is the solution and so on. It's on, I only want to, to point a, a business case to let you know what are the, the things, what are the goals you can get thanks to the transport simulation. And in this case, it's a transportation of beer. It's one of the, the biggest producer of beer in, in Europe. And they wanted to, to send the, their own reference even further, increasing the business. They want to minimize the environmental impact. And they want, they want at the end to optimize the package. They don't want to suffer damage during transportation. They want everything to arrive safely to the delivery center or supermarket or whatever. And they want to optimize the cost. It's always the matter of that. We need to be safe in the safe part, but we want to spend the less money as possible and the less materials as possible. So here we can see the kind of test we perform for this business case, an acceleration forces in the longitudinal and lateral side of the road. Okay, so as you can see in this in this specific project, we are focused only on the stretch field, only in the stretch field. We don't really study in deep the primary or the secondary packaging. We arrive only to optimize the tertiary packaging. Okay, so this is the status quo and the alternative we propose with different stretch field, thickness one, etc. etc. Okay, so here you have some numbers. But basically, the idea is that we can compare what they have and what they are having now with alternative. So that the best, the only way to do that is a, a lab test because you are reproducing exactly the same input for both unit loads. So you can compare the results of both unit loads. So here we compare the both results. We saw that the alternative was strong, was safe. And then we compare the different numbers. We compare the numbers of the hours of machine use. I mean, if we need to grab the machine for 10 seconds and we can reduce it to five or six seconds, at the end of the year, we are reducing, in this case, more than 1,000 hours per, per year. So you can imagine it's only, it's also a matter of a lot of money saved in, in, in this. Obviously, we optimize the cost, the, save, the savings for this product only in the plastic, I repeat, only in the stretch film, are more than 100,000 euros. Okay, right now, it's more than $100,000 too. So, it's only one, one specific project in this specific company who saved 100,000 euros. On the other hand, as we are reducing the plastic and we are reducing the stress film used, we can say that we are saving plastic. You can see more than 100 tons of plastic were saved and also obviously the CO2 footprint because right now everyone is asking to reduce in the, food, the CO2 footprint, reducing the plastic consumption. So how to do that? Well, the transport simulation tools help us to doing that. Okay, so I hope uh, my presentation was clear enough about what is the transport simulation, why we need to simulate the transportation when designing a, a package, and what are the, the advantages. Anyway, as Narvasate explained, we are having a, a questions at the end of the next speaker presentation, and I will be happy to answer all your, your questions. And here you have my contact details, so you can also write me an email or give me a call, and I will be happy to, to help every one of you. So thank you, everyone, and thank you, Ranga Prasad. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos, for a very uh, lucid uh, presentation, taking us through the complexities and uh, showing us how real life uh, situations have been incorporated into simulation and devising laboratory test methods and then evolving standards for the for standard for uh, the various uh, kind of forces that the package is likely to encounter during air transportation sea transportation road transportation
and obviously this has resulted in businesses like DHL, FedEx, Amazon, the Flipkart, all these companies growing their business on account of very systematic scientific and engineering approach to uh, a safe delivery of packages. Thank you once again, Carlos, for your presence this afternoon and uh, my pleasure. This presentation. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Yeah. So with this. Uh, what we will do is we will take you can put your, the request to the audiences to put down the questions in the question box addressed to a specific speaker and so that we can take it after the uh, next presentation so with this uh, it's my pleasure to welcome mr ram ratan singhi he is the ceo of sure group and as uh, mentioned earlier he has a lot of experience in the field of logistics he, his passion is in interest and interests are in technology and uh, for the application of uh, in the logistics business. So without wasting much time, the floor is yours, Mr. Ram Ratan. So uh, yeah, at the outset, uh, let me begin uh, by saying, good evening, everyone. So I just want everybody to be a little more, uh, more attentive and see if we can, we can uh, you know, uh, get a bit of, uh, information and knowledge sharing going uh, by this presentation that we are going to have today. So at the outset, I want to thank Mr. R. Prasad for this uh, fabulous idea of uh, using uh, this webinar to discuss about the uh, potential issues that are there in e-commerce packaging. So I'm going to focus specifically with what is happening with regards to India. So, I mean, let us see if, uh, you know, uh, this uh, generates some interest in the audience to ask some questions. And that will be uh, the uh, kind of ultimate uh, judgment for us that we have been successful in creating a good discussion. Yeah. So I'm about to start my presentation, guys. So can you all see my screen, full screen? We can see the screen, but there is nothing displaying on the screen right now. Can you check right now? Uh, because I can see the screen and I had selected, yeah, I had selected uh, um, the keynote uh, where my presentation is. I suggest we okay, I can, we can see a screen now. You can? There seems to be some issue. We are not able to see it again. I suggest we switch to PowerPoint. Okay, give me a moment. So could you give me that uh, option again where you have to select a uh, Is this better? Yes, could you go to full screen mode, please? Okay, uh, is it now visible to everyone? Can you confirm if it's visible now? It's visible, but not in full screen. I suggest we continue with the current display. You can go ahead. We can carry on. No problem. You can just, yeah, it's okay. Oh, okay. 
or uh, you want me to go to this uh, no no no, no please uh, you can uh, you can continue the presentation you can go back to the original slide first slide and then continue from there okay yeah so uh, again welcome to everyone uh, for this presentation uh, i'm going to be talking on e-commerce logistics in india and what kind of packaging development and challenges uh, we face here particularly uh, within indian context so uh, the topics that i have listed for this particular presentation uh, would be that uh, we'll talk about e-commerce logistics uh, it's all about speed we'll talk about uh, packaging design challenges we will also talk about a typical process flow of how e-commerce logistics operates and then excuse we'll me look mr ramrathan uh, the your presentation is not visible you will have to is click on the yeah is it now the screen is visible but the presentation is closed i guess you don't you have to click on one of those present powerpoint presentation yeah is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so let me, let me just see if this is the one I. You can continue with this here, please. Yeah, so it has opened this one, but I mean, give me a moment because when I'm doing a play here, uh, I uh, now can you see my screen uh, with first slide? Yeah, this is the. We can see a screen with the topics in it. I suggest we continue with this. You, uh, you uh, I mean, now I'm scrolling down to the second page. So can you see the second page now? Yes, yes, yes. We can see the second okay, page. Great. You can continue. Yeah, sorry. So uh, I was uh, talking about the process flow. Then we have, uh, we will also show you something about how a long haul transportation of e-commerce happens in India. We'll look at some last mile delivery challenges and then we'll look at the importance of testing of e-commerce packaging. Uh, so uh, the first thing about e-commerce is it's all about speed, right? Uh, we all know that uh, when we click on um, anything that we buy on Amazon and we say we are uh, going to get this delivered by Amazon Prime, uh, there are uh, you know uh, certain specific instances where Amazon promises uh, delivery within two hours in the same city. So it's it's really about speed, and this results in a very tough package handling environment, uh, particularly because the package has to encounter a lot of shocks and vibrations. Um, there are uh, at the warehouse level there are shorters which operate at very high speed, and uh, that also creates intense force on packages. Manual loading unloading at last mile means that the packages are uh, often handled by uh, a lot of manpower. And that also uh, has its own problems. So here uh, I'll take you to this, um, uh, you know, specific instances of how a package design, uh, particularly for e-commerce, could be challenging. Uh, first thing is that a lot of e-commerce companies now want to move towards what is known as frustration-free packaging. So when you say frustration-free packaging, what it essentially means is that you can open that package without need of any knife or any other equipment, uh, simply by pulling a tab or something like that. Uh, that's uh, creating a new kind of uh, I mean, design challenge for the uh, people who are involved in uh, the e-commerce packaging. Apart from that, uh, you will also see that uh, uh, in the last uh, few, uh, I, I would say few months, particularly in India, uh, that a single use plastic ban is getting implemented. Globally, it has been uh, implemented in few countries already. And due to this, uh, companies like Amazon and Flipkart are trying to reduce uh, the uh, impact of their packaging on the environment uh, through various means, uh, reducing the extra packaging, uh, switching from uh, the filler material, which was earlier used to be a lot of plastic to some other materials, and uh, also looking at converting some of the cartons into some kind of envelope or some kind of plastic envelope packaging. Multimodal transport uh, in e-commerce is quite common. So you could have the packages delivered by air, road, rail, and in the last mile, it could be even bicycles or 
simple um, uh, motorcycles. Uh, different levels of warehouse automation is another challenge that uh, we see in e-commerce packaging because there are large distribution centers which are quite automated in their operation. And then you have the last mile or the, or the smaller delivery centers which are absolutely not automated at all. So you have um, these two extreme situation inside warehouses. Damages to the outer packaging would mean that there would be uh, the package will obviously be returned by the customer. And therefore, uh, uh, the e-commerce players have to uh, incur a reverse logistics cost. And they are only uh, working on an extremely small margin, so this could impact their profitability. In the process flow of any uh, e-commerce logistics, you will see, so if we place an order for, let's say, a TV, it will get picked up uh, either from the nearest dealer or from the nearest um, warehouse of the manufacturer. It comes to, let's say, the Amazon uh, DC or delivery cent uh, uh, distribution center. And from there, it again gets either repaired or uh, packed according to their uh, standards. And it, then it gets sorted by a sorter. And finally, it uh, is uh, traveling by truck a certain mile, and then it goes to a distribution center. From there, it gets delivered maybe by tempo or by some other means. So you can see there are multiple ways in which this package has been handled in the supply chain. The most interesting part about e-commerce supply chain is, uh, particularly from Indian context, is what we see is, you know, this um, postal model of delivery being adopted by these large e-commerce players. So when I say postal model of delivery, what it essentially means is that you have a, a lot of packages being uh, packed into certain gunny bag kind of bags, and these bags are finally uh, stuffed inside trucks for the long haul transportation. You can see in the picture here, uh, it looks very haphazard. And now if you give this as a challenge to any package designer to design a carton, I'm sure he will uh, have a terrible time to understand what should be his ECT, what should be his uh, BCT, what should be the you know uh, stack height of the carton, because you can see there is nothing um, standardized about this particular uh, kind of stuffing. Uh, this makes the job of package designers and testers very tough, as it is difficult to calculate the forces acting on cartons and packages. And obviously, uh, the damages inside uh, the particular bags would be very tough to identify as to what really caused the damage. Was it because of, uh, somebody pushed the bag? Was it because the top bag had a lot of weight on the bottom bag? It's, it's quite unpredictable. Manual loading and unloading would add further to this challenge. And still you figure out that, uh, you know, there is no other way uh, in India to do e-commerce logistics as this is, for the moment, uh, this is the most cost-effective uh, way to transport e-commerce packages. In the last mile delivery, again, uh, you will see uh, the picture here, you know, that it's a very typical last mile bike delivery. And you will see this is a large bag, again, uh, you know, um, stuffed with a lot of packages. And this uh, biker typically would not have so much information or idea as to which package is a fragile package and which is a more robust package, which he should place down and which he should, uh, he should place up. And besides uh, that, he also has to encounter a lot of speed breakers, bad roads, jumping and jerking, and these bikes typically have very little uh, kind of um, a way to uh, eliminate those kind of jerks and shocks and vibrations. Uh, bikers are often quite uh, um, frustrated because of very harsh working environment that they work in, and you will see often them mishandling the packages. Uh, poor training, as, you, as I just mentioned, uh, they are not aware of what, uh, what kind of package should be kept down and what kind of package should be kept up and this creates uh, its own challenges. So finally, uh, you know, uh, from all this, what we have discussed, uh, we come to a very uh, important subject of today, which is, uh, you know, how is package testing going to uh, solve some of the challenges and why it's important that uh, package testing methods are adopted by the e-commerce uh, vendors and the suppliers and also the large players so as to arrive at a uniform uh, packaging standard. So uh, what we know a little bit about this particular subject is that um, Amazon in its um, entire supply chain has been following a certain um, Amazon standards in package testing. And that uh, has a lot of um, information and a lot of standard uh, ways to test the packaging, whether it can sustain in their supply chain. 
Uh, the brown box of Amazon is designed to handle most rough handling in supply chain. And we figured out that this box is generally more stronger than the boxes we see outside uh, in other particular industries. Uh, movies Mr. Ramaratun, sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to know, are you still uh, explaining the second slide or have you moved on? Because I'm on the last see the second slide. Oh, oh no. because we can still see the second slide. Uh, oh. I believe if you, if you have the option of, uh, you can see the option of uh, give keyboard and mouse control on the sharing options. Yeah, okay. So I will uh, give this to the, uh, to, you uh, give it to CNT. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Just a moment. There is a firewall here which is not allowing me to do that and I'm trying to get through this but it's not really going through. Okay, I suggest you close the presentation and use uh, upload uh, and you restart it in PowerPoint and then okay. share the screen again. Okay, fine. Yeah, I opened the presentation in PowerPoint now. Yeah, I think now it's showing me, you know, what I'm doing uh, in terms of clicking. Can you guys see it now yes. clearly? Yes, yes, not, you can continue. Uh, so, so, I hope that uh, I was able to communicate some of uh, via my talk of what I was trying to show in the slides. Uh, but I, I, I'll again take you through uh, just one minute quick uh, slide uh, show, so that everybody gets the picture at least what I was trying to say. Okay, so we were discussing about the e-commerce logistics and it's all about speed and how uh, you need to be, uh, and there are various hazards that a package goes through when it's an uh, in e-commerce supply chain. Uh, in this slide particularly, you guys will see a picture of one carton which uh, has got damaged due to some bad handling and this particular uh, is very common in e-commerce and this is what I was uh, mentioning about uh, that if uh, you receive such a carton, most likely you would return back that package rather than keep that package. Uh, coming to uh, the order flow, uh, so I think we all, we all know about uh, a typical e-commerce um, order flow and how it goes through uh, various warehouses and distribution centers and uh, the final delivery uh, point. This is what I wanted to focus a little more on because uh, this is something I, I'm not really sure if it's this is very common in other parts of the world, but this is what is being done in India when it comes to e-commerce logistics, uh, be it uh, any of the big uh, players in the e-commerce space in logistics, they all use similar kind of approach uh, when it comes to uh, uh, transportation from uh, one delivery, uh, one distribution center to another distribution center. And you can see it is very haphazard. And it, to do a package design or to do any kind of uh, testing for uh, package to be withstanding this kind of um, logistics is very, very challenging. And here I was on my uh, slide uh, just uh, uh, explaining about the last mile delivery challenges. Uh, again, you will see uh, that um, there will there will be 30, 40 packages inside this bag, and this guy is taking them on a bike, and there are there will be a lot of jerks uh, due to speed breakers, due to bad roads, and this package has to encounter all that. So um, I think the most important slide that I wanted to highlight uh, today and the focus was on this last slide, uh, where we are discussing about the package testing per se, or uh, how it can um, uh, prevent some of the hazards that we discussed and how we can reduce the amount of transit damages uh, which uh, are a part and parcel of any e-commerce supply chain. So uh, I was, um, I'll just go through one by one again. So e-commerce uh, 
packaging has evolved over the last decade to such an extent that now we have a certain Amazon standards in package testing. And this is something that Amazon has developed, which basically validates that if you pass the test, uh, the package that you have designed can go through an Amazon supply chain handling uh, and uh, various uh, hazards. The brown box of Amazon I was uh, mentioning is a uh, better quality box. It's uh, uh, much more robust compared to other uh, similar boxes which uh, you know, the typical um, industry uses. So this is again another area where uh, Amazon has done a lot of work. Uh, moving towards frustration-free packaging is an opportunity for package designers to enhance consumer uh, online shopping experience. Uh, testing uh, will have to evolve with input from the field, uh, different levels of package handling, which in some ways uh, mimics the courier delivery or the postal delivery. Reduction in packaging waste regulations uh, presents another opportunity uh, for uh, changing the filler materials. For example, you have seen those uh, small pouches or bags which are uh, uh, typically protecting a, um, a product. Uh, these are being now replaced by different kind of uh, environment friendly um, filler material. Our testing of new methods and packaging materials is an ongoing process and that requires up to date information about regulations and emerging consumer preferences. Ultimately, uh, the goal of everyone involved in supply chain packaging should be customer delight. It is all for that one moment when customer opens his package, gets his deliver, uh, order delivered damage free and gets that smile is when we all uh, are, are delighted. So that's the objective of uh, this um, e-commerce packaging at the end of the day. And uh, we all have to strive to kind of, you know, achieve that. Uh, I think that's what uh, I wanted to say for today. And now I leave the uh, house open for the panel to uh, take uh, this forward. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ram Ratan for, uh, uh, for this presentation. Uh, uh, sorry for about this small glitch, a uh, technical glitch in uh, running through the slides. Uh, now the uh, webinar is open for questions. We have one question from Mr. Rajesh Gupta, and I think this is addressed to Carlos. Uh, the question uh, is for you, Carlos. Is, are there different test methods based on the product like glass or metallic products? Hi, thank you. Uh, yeah, there are different norms depending on, on the type of package, but depend the type of product, sorry. But ba basically, it's more focused on the supply chain. It means it doesn't matter if your your product is glass or your product or your package is glass or whatever, because at the end, what you need to to reproduce, what you need to test is the different forces that the, your package and your product and package is going to suffer. So the transport simulation tools, the equipment, the machines, what they reproduce is the truck itself. It's not exactly uh, something related with the glass or something related with the box. So there are some specific points uh, when we're talking about some different products, like for, for instance, there are different in the Amazon, for instance, they differentiate the TVs or something like that, different kind of products. But basically, what we simulate is the truck itself. So what you can simulate is the supply chain, and it doesn't matter if it is a glass or it is metallic or whatever. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can we have uh, some more questions from the audience? Okay, uh, since uh, the audience is still in the process of preparing questions, uh, my question, uh, I would like to ask one question to Mr. Carlos Mora. Uh, how often does the ISTA committee meet to revise its, say, its standards or uh, uh, on different kinds of uh, package testing methodologies? Yeah, there are a committee that is always reviewing all the, all the test methods. Basically, as they also have 
a way to to collect all the different tests that the people are performing and what are the problems they are having when they detect something they can update this specific test method so there is not a specific time where they or us uh, design or review a document or review a, a test procedure is when we detect that there is a need in in, in that specific uh, test procedure okay on the other hand we have also people or technical committees that we are thinking in new things uh, thinking in what are what is missing right now and they are developing new a new test for instance now there are people thinking in the acceleration test what is the profile we need to apply and, and so on so there is not a specific time when we change the, the procedures but when something uh, that is detected that is uh, really useful for to improve the, the the method or when we detect that it's something that is quite old that nobody is using so then we can think about removing this method or improving it yeah thank you uh, Mr. Ramratan, uh, there is a general perception uh, among the general public in India that most of the e-commerce packages uh, are they consume a, they are overpacked, and uh, that you must have read in the newspapers also. People use a lot of uh, material when it is not required. What is what are your thoughts on uh, overpackaging of uh, simple products like say mobile phones or uh, you know smaller items which are which are ordered online? You have to unmute yourself. From the, from our understanding of the way these packages are handled, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, we have a lot of manual handling in India, and also the shocks and vibrations and jerks here are a little more maybe than in other parts of the world. So there is a tendency to do over packaging uh, to protect the product. That's one. That's one part. And a second part, particularly with some very high value items like mobile phones. Uh, the risk uh, is that uh, there are instances where if the delivery boy or the you know person in the supply chain knows that uh, a particular package is carrying mobile, there have been instances where people have you know played around with it, like remove the mobile, put something else, the package get delivered to the customer. When she opens it, he finds it's not mobile, it's something else. So to avoid these kind of challenges, they do try to uh, kind of you know mask the product in such a way that the last person in the delivery chain should not know what is going inside that package. So these are the two reasons. One is the uh, hazards, uh, which are there uh, due to the manual handling. And uh, second is this kind of instance. Okay, fine. So, uh, so there are no more questions. Uh, uh, we would like to conclude this session. I'd like to thank uh, both Mr. Carlos Mora and Mr. Ram Ratan for sparing their time. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, this is a small effort on our part to uh, be aligned with the developments that are happening uh, in the e-commerce space. Hopefully this will uh, generate a lot of interest. Uh, so with this, uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank for you. the question. Thank you so much. Take care.